All right, so let's take a look at problem nine. Uh, so problem nine, it says use the Lee Kessler method to answer the following. Uh, so first, remember the the Kessler method essentially corresponds to our three parameter corresponding states theory. Uh, Lee Kessler are just the two guys that um, tabulated um, values for Z0 and Z1 as a function of reduced coordinates. Um, so Lee Kessler method is corresponding states theory. They are just the two guys that um, tabulated Z and Z0 or Z0 and Z1 uh, as a function of reduced coordinates. So we're going to use the Lee Kessler method to answer the following questions. 2,000 kilograms of kryptons to be stored under pressure in a tank at 110 bars and 20 degrees C. The tank is designed to withstand pressures up to 180 bars. Determine the volume of the tank. Is it safe to store 2,500 kilograms in the tank at 25 degrees C? Uh, and then is the Lee Kessler method um, appropriate? All right, so let's take inventory of what we have. So... Um, so if I just think about what we have, it says that, um, so our mass is 2,000 kilograms, uh, pressure is 110 bars, and temperature is 20 degrees C. Okay, so a couple of things come to mind uh, before we even tackle um, this problem. Okay, so first um, is in general, when we're working with um, our cubic equation state or, you know, equation state in general, um, you know, we're going to be working in terms of moles and not mass. Okay, so the first thing that's going to come to mind is that I'm going to want to go from mol uh, mass to moles, right? And the conversion factor to do that is going to be uh, my molecular weight. So when we go to look up uh, properties in the back of the book, molecular weight will, will be there, right? So um, I'm going to want to use the molecular weight to convert the mass that's provided to, to moles, okay? The uh, second thing that comes to mind um, when working with both Lee Kessler and then ultimately our cubic equation to state is essentially for a given fluid, I need to know Tc, Pc, and omega. So Tc, Pc, and omega will be provided um, in the back of the book. Um, and so in, in our textbook that's in Appendix A, uh, for this problem, though, I'm going to use the appendix from Smith, Van Ness, and Abbott, which is uploaded to Canvas. So we'll, we'll take a look at it in a second. Uh, reason being is in our course textbook for the Lee Kessler method, um, they just provide you plots of um, Z1 and, and Z0. Um, where Smith, Abbott, and Van Ness will provide you with uh, tabulated values. Okay, so, uh, you know, we're going to need to look up TC, PC, and Omega for um, our fluid, Krypton, um, and then uh, we're going to need the molecular weight of Krypton as well, so we can go from uh, mass to moles. Now, the idea with using uh, Lee Kessler method is Lee Kessler is our three parameter corresponding states theory, and it's going to take the form of Z, my compressibility, is going to be Z0 plus omega times Z1. Okay, And I want to write this further, where Z0 is going to be a function of reduced temperature and reduced pressure, Okay, plus omega times Z1, where Z1 is going to be a function of reduced temperature and pressure. Okay, So uh, if I look up TC and PC, and then I know my temperature and pressure, which, you know, for A I do, you know, I know my pressure is uh, 110 bars and temperature is 20 degrees C. So convert that temperature to um, Kelvin, calculate my reduced temperature and reduced pressure. I'll go to my tables, look up values of Z0 and Z1, uh, and then compute Z. And then once I have Z, um, I can get V from my equation of state for real fluids. All right, so then when it comes to A, okay, the idea will be um, I know my temperature, I know my pressure, okay, um, I can use that to calculate TR and PR, and so I'm going to need to go to tables to look up Z0 and Z1. Okay, so I mentioned um, on Canvas, um, under syllabus and class resources, is you have this appendix from Smith, Van Ness, and Abbott, um, and so I, I have a copy downloaded um, on my computer already, okay, and so the first appendix, uh, that's just conversion factors, um, their appendix B is just like our appendix A, 
Um, so for Krypton, I could look up, you know, uh, centric factor, critical temperature, and critical pressure. Uh, so Krypton, we would expect an eccentric factor of essentially zero, right? And it is zero, so the second term, the correctional term, uh, isn't even necessary. Two parameter corresponding states theory is uh, enough for Krypton, which is one of our noble gases. Okay, but you know that aside, we look up Tc, Pc, and Omega, and then in Appendix E they provide the Kessler tables. Okay, so the first sets for uh, compressibility factor is Z. Um, and so first, once I know my reduced pressure and reduced temperature, um, I would use that to read off, you know, Z naught. So for example, if I had a reduced pressure of 0.2 and a reduced temperature of 0.97, right, here's my value of Z naught, right? But again, you, you, you need to calculate PR and TR, um, and this may, you know, require you to perform double interpolation, um, but, you know, once you know PR and TR, um, you could find the value of Z naught. Right. Single component, uh, single phase system, two degrees of freedom are needed to pin down the state of my system. So here we're pinning down essentially with temperature uh, and pressure um, in our reduced coordinates um, where we achieve data collapse. Okay, and then for um, if there's something other than Krypton, so in Krypton in theory Z1 is not necessary since omega is, is zero, um, but you do the same thing uh, knowing your critical or reduced pressure and reduced temperature you'd look up a value of, of Z1. Okay? So, oh, so idea here is that yeah, in, in A, um, since I know uh, Tc, Pc, and Omega, um, and I know my temperature uh, and pressure, okay, I can use that to calculate my reduced coordinates, um, look up Z0 and Z1 in the back of the book, uh, compute Z, and then once I have Z, Okay, I need to determine the volume of my tank. Well, I can use my equation of state for real fluids. PV is equal to ZRT. Okay, so I can solve for my molar volume. V is going to be Z, which I just calculated from the Kessler method, times RT. Okay, T is given. That's our um, is it 20 degrees C um, over P. Pressure is given. That's our um, 110 bars. Okay. All right, and I say temperature is given, but remember, it's given in C. You're going to want to convert that to Kelvin. Right? Whenever working with our equations of state or working with reduced coordinates, always need absolute temperatures. Okay, so I calculate V. Um, we want the total volume, though. Well, remember, the relationship is NV is equal to V total. Okay, um, And so we you know, have just ca calculated V. Um, and we know, all right, we're given mass of krypton to be stored. Using molecular weight, we can convert mass to moles. Okay, um, the mass can also be pulled from that um, appendix B. Okay, and just to go over for completeness, as I skipped it, um, yeah, I go back to this appendix B. Um, they have the molar mass, right? So I can I can pull off the molecular weight. Of Krypton, you just need to be conscious of the units, though. So, technically, the SI units of molar mass are going to be Daltons. Uh, so, you know, the molecular mass here is is grams per mole. Okay, um, you're given mass in kilograms. Yeah, so you have you know 2,000 kilograms. Uh, so that's 2,000 times 10 to the 3 grams. All right, so make sure you use the appropriate mass with the molecular weight to determine the number of moles in your system. Okay, uh, and then once you have the number of moles and we calculate the molar volume, you can use that to get your total volume. And again, just keep track of your units. Okay, um, then B. So B, it says, is it safe to store 2,500 kilograms in the tank at 25 degrees C. Okay, is it safe to store 2,500 kilograms in the tank at, at 25 degrees C? So if I have a um, single component, single phase system, remember I have two degrees of freedom. So I need to specify two intensive properties to fix the state of my system. So looking at B, we're given temperature. Temperature is 25 degrees C. Um, I need a second. And so what I interpret the second as is um, molar volume. Okay, so essentially in A, 
we calculated the volume of my tank. So we'll assume you know, the volume is rigid. It's not changing. Um, and then we're given mass again. I can convert that mass to moles, and I can use that to kind of calculate molar volume. All right, so, so in B, B, our temperature is going to be 25 degrees C, which we can convert to Kelvin. Okay. okay. Then we're given, you know, our mass is 2,500 kilograms, which we can convert to moles using our molecular weight. And then uh, since I know V total from the last problem, my molar volume is just going to be V total divided by N, where N is going to be this new number of moles um, in this problem. All right, so I know T and I know V. So in theory, the thermodynamic state of my system is fixed. Now, when it asks, is it safe to store um, that amount of, of krypton, um, what I interpret that is, is, okay, state of my system is fixed. Let's solve for P, because once I solve for P, right, I can compare it to um, you know, this maximum pressure of 180 bars. Okay. Now, the challenge of doing that, though, is we just looked at the Lee-Kessler tables. The Lee-Kessler tables are set up so that if you know the reduced temperature and reduced pressure, you can read off your values of um, Z0 and Z1. Okay. The other way we could tackle this is I know that as the mass of krypton or the moles of krypton in my system increases, pressure is also going to increase. Okay. So the other way I would probably tackle this, which I think would be a little easier from a calculation standpoint with those tables, is we're told that the tank can withstand a pressure of 180 bars. Okay, So one way I could do this then is we're told the temperature is 25 degrees C. Okay, We're told essentially P max is 180 bars. Okay, So we can repeat our calculation from A using this temperature and pressure. All right, So that if I repeat my calculation from A uh, in theory, so with this temperature and with this pressure, um, so again, convert this to Kelvin, I can go to my Lee-Kessler tables, and I can calculate or find Z0 and Z1. I can then use that to get Z. Once I have Z, I can solve for molar volume, okay, at that temperature and that maximum pressure. Once I solve for uh, molar volume, now I'll rearrange this equation in a slightly different way, um, and that I can solve for you know, that's with Pmax, essentially I can solve for Nmax, where Nmax would be V total divided by that V I just solved for, essentially Vmax. Okay, where V total I calculated uh, in A, V I just calculated under the conditions of this maximum pressure, and so that shouldn't give me the maximum number of moles that my system can, you know, hold um, at that temperature. All right, so at 25 degrees C, here's the maximum number of moles I can uh, get in my system. Um, and then you could compare that um, to the actual number of moles in your system. Um, or if you want to convert this to mass, you could compare it to the actual mass. So if N max, the maximum number of moles my system can you know, hold, uh, is greater than the actual number of moles in my system, then it's safe. Uh, if the actual number of moles in my system is greater or equal to you know, n max, then I have a problem. Okay, I think it that doing this is is doing it this way is a, a little easier, right? So again, um, given this temperature and then the maximum pressure that my system can withstand, I can go and calculate the maximum number of moles that my system can um, hold uh, at that temperature. And then once I know that maximum number of moles that my system can hold at a temperature of 25 degrees C, I could compare that to the actual number of moles um, that I'm checking to see if my system can hold. And as long as the maximum number of moles is greater than the actual number of moles I'm interested in storing, uh, then it's safe. Okay? Uh, and this is compared to, in theory, I could go the other way where I specify temperature in moles. It, and when I specify moles and I know the total volume, I can go and get the molar volume. But knowing temperature and molar volume becomes a little more annoying in terms of using the Lee-Kessler tables. All right? Essentially, I would need to solve this then in, in an iterative fashion. All right? I would know the reduced temperature. What I would essentially have to do is guess the value of the reduced pressure, use that to calculate Z, 
You use that to calculate molar volume and see if that molar volume is equal to the actual molar volume. If it isn't, come up with a new guess, right? And so basically you would have to use the Lee Kessler tables in an iterative fashion, which would be a little more cumbersome in terms of uh, coming up with a solution. Okay, so I hope that helps. Um, then the only other question is, is the Lee Kessler method um, appropriate? Um, so, you know, you can look at, um, you know, the text, um, but in general, if I'm going to use uh, corresponding states theory, um, I'm going to be looking at um, vapor phases, um, essentially superheated vapor. So I'm going to be at vapor phases at low pressures, you know, well removed from the critical point. Um, it's where the Kessler I would expect to, uh, to be applicable, um, you know, and it's used safer is going to be for, you know, things like Krypton. Uh, which are noble gases. Uh, so basically, uh, it's just you know a little check. So read in in the text about applicability applicability of Lee Kessler. Um, but again, uh, typically I'll be looking more so at um, superheated vapors at uh, low pressures. And in general, um, you know if I have TC, PC, and omega, um, I'm going to use a cubic equation of state over over Lee Kessler. Okay. Hope that helps.